and we are live. Hello, once again, <laughs> um, and welcome to another segment of our Summer Academy. Um, today, we're going to be, um, we're going to do a little thing that's different today. <laughs> it's going to be very different. Um, but first, I wanted to introduce myself. I am Meryl. Um, I am the director of Rainbow Alley. And so um, I'm very grateful to be able to have with us today um, Alexis Chavez, um, as well as our interpreter, uh, Kendra, of course. Uh, so I first want to let you know a little bit about Alexis um, before we get started. So um, Alexis is a founder of multiple award-winning clinics that focus on LGBTQ mental health and disciplinary um, and interdisciplinary trans health. Uh, she has she has trained providers across the country to be more competent working with the LGBTQ population. Um, and uh, she has held various offices and positions from the local to national level, including treasurer of AGL, uh, AGLP, um, the National Organization for LGBTQ Psychiatrists, medical director of the Trevor Project, member of the Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Issues Committee of um, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. And if that's not enough, because <laughs> that's a lot, um, and a member of um, the Board of Directors for the GLBT Center of Colorado. She's an APA SAMHSA fellow, um, a Power Gala Award winner, and an aunt to a growing number of adorable children. I love that. <laughs> Welcome, Alexis. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. I thought that we might do something a little different tonight. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk broadly about coping skills. And during so many times of turmoil or trouble, and we're really not sure about what's going on, it's good to have a nice little toolkit of mm -hmm. things that we can fall back and rely on. And it doesn't matter what they are, they can be all kinds of different things. And I'll give you some examples in a bit. We can talk through them. We can sit on the couch and hang out for a bit together. But first, I want to try something with you. So bear with me for a second. Personally, I love to eat ice cream. So uh, I've tried making ice cream recently, and I'm not exactly sure how um, how it works. I'm just not that good at it yet. And I saw a recipe recently that I thought I just have to try. Mm -hmm. It says that you can make ice cream in a mason jar or one of one of these little ball jars, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. uh, like a jam jar. And it only takes a few ingredients, five minutes to make. So I thought, why don't we try that? Because for me, eating ice cream can be a coping skill. Making ice cream can be a coping skill. So let's try it. Let me move my laptop for you. <laughs> All right, so now you can see where I'm working. Uh, I just looked up the ingredients, but I might need to look them up again. Bear with me. No worries. So first thing we need is a cup of heavy cream. So there's some heavy cream here. Let's see how it mixed up a little bit. Let's see how this goes. Never tried this before, so if it fails miserably, we'll have something to share together. Mm. 
And if anyone feels like this has a little bit of a Mr. Rogers vibe doing something with you, then I'll take that as a compliment. So there's our cup of cream. And now we need some sugar and some vanilla. I think it's one and a half tablespoons of sugar, if I remember correctly. So I've got a half tablespoon right here. So I'm going to need three of these. Here's one. Two. That's pretty close to three. Okay. And then the last thing we need is some vanilla extract. I think we need one and a half teaspoons of this. Not to be confused with tablespoons or we're gonna get a whole lot of vanilla. So if I got a half tablespoon right here, so I'm gonna need three of these as well. One, two, three. All right. Now, the recipe that I looked up said that we can add some salt. Personally, I kind of want to see how it goes without it. So we're going to make this up, mix this up tight. I'm going to put away the cream for a second here. And then we shake this for about five minutes. So I'm going to move us back up here. You can see me shaking it. I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. Let's hope my arms don't get tired. And what we're doing now with the cream is we're trying to get it to thicken. And once it thickens enough, it's all going to mix together and expand. And we will have to put this in the freezer afterwards but perhaps that's all we'll have to do. One of the things I've been looking up recently as I've been trying a couple other ways of making ice cream is that when you make ice cream, you make some kind of mixture like this. And what an ice cream maker does is it adds air to it because if you just freeze it without mixing it or without taking it or whatever you're doing, it's just going to come out real solid, like if you had a melted pint of ice cream and put that back in the freezer. But if you put some air in it, it gives that nice fluffy texture that we like in ice cream. So I think that's what we're doing here is I think we're shaking it up, add a little bit of air to it. It's almost like a, like a butter. So we'll see how this goes. What I think that we'll do is when we're done shaking it, I'll put it in the freezer and then we'll leave it there until we're done with the, with the program, with the show. And then we'll come back to it and see what it looks like. It might still be running. I don't know if it'll be good enough to eat, but fingers crossed. So we've got about three minutes still left on the timer. Getting tired? Just a little bit, actually. One of you, would one of you like to take it for a minute and give me a break? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why I use a, a, a mixer when I do that. <laughs> so sometimes there's a, you can use like a mixer or an ice cream maker or something like that. You might be able to find one at some place like Goodwill for $5 if you're lucky. Um, if you can't find one there, you can sometimes find them on Amazon or in a 
in uh, a Walmart or something like that. Um, so a few different options to check out if making ice cream is interesting for you too. Yeah, I know that I've been making a lot of ice cream myself lately. Yeah? So, yes. <laughs> Do you have any particular flavors that you've been liking recently? So I've made um, green tea flavored, um, vanilla, and uh, my last one was cookies and cream. Nice. And I don't eat dairy, so I had to get like a dairy-free version of what <laughs> out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it came out pretty good. Um, I'm also gluten-free, so the cookies and cream weren't Nice. Yeah. Sometimes uh, coconut cream can work really well for a, a vegan or dairy-free, lactose-free ice cream option. Yeah. Um, In fact, if you take coconut cream and you mix it with um, like a can of coconut cream and a can of canned pumpkin, it can make a really nice ice cream. Maybe I'll try that. You can crumble some, um, crumble some gluten-free cookies on top of that or graham crackers and it's like an upside down pumpkin pie. Huh. That's a great idea. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> All right. We got one more minute here on the timer. Awesome. It's, uh, it's not jiggling around in here so much. It seems like it's gotten a bit thicker. Yeah. I don't hear it as much anymore. Mm -mm. I want to take a peek and see what it looks like before we throw it in the freezer. <laughs> That'd be great. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Home stretch. I, yeah. I know you must be tired. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a trying to switch the left hand to the right hand, but there's a rhythm to it. Usually I use these jars for making overnight oatmeal in. If you throw mm. out a scoop of yogurt and a little bit of whatever kind of milk you like, just set it in the fridge overnight and it's oatmeal in the morning. Mm. It's pretty nice. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Is anyone else's hands tired just watching that? <laughs> I definitely got tired watching that. <laughs> so let's take a look inside. Right now you can see how it thickened into a little bit of a, like a butter or like a cream like consistency, like mm -hmm. a whipped cream almost. It smells kind of good. It smells like melted ice cream. I'm impressed. I didn't know how that was going to go either. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to throw this in the freezer real quick. Awesome. All right. So now, if you'll come into my living room and join me, we can talk some more there. Awesome. Um, just giving us a whole tour. Wait. <laughs> I brought a couple friends with me for us to chat with. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we have, uh, this is Big Panda and this is Pandita. These are two of my friends that I like to hang out with. Pandita comes with me uh, whenever I travel. She always seems to find a way into my suitcase. Big Panda likes to stay at home. Uh, Big Panda is quite the philosopher and Pandita is the little troublemaker. So now you know, now you know what my family is like. So I thought that we would talk about different kinds of coping skills and coping strategies and what you do when you're not feeling so great or even more importantly, what you can do every day to keep yourself feeling well. Mm -hmm. So one of the really important things about coping strategies 
is that they're best when you work them in every day. Um, if you think about riding your bike down a hill, if you think about when you want to start to break, it doesn't do so well if you only start to break when you're already in the middle of the street. You have to start breaking way in advance for it to be really effective. Coping skills are like that too. If you do them a little bit every day, they'll help you feeling well rather than only needing them, uh, rather than only using them when you're feeling in a mental health emergency or something like that. So I'm introducing you to a couple things that I like to do. I like to make ice cream and do some adventurous things like that with my food. Um, I'm still learning how, some of them still turn out pretty bad and that's okay too. Um, I, I tried to make something the other day and I confused teaspoons and tablespoons and it never froze. It, I didn't make it in a jar like that. I made it in a container and I put in, I put in way too much salt and misread the instructions and it was just this big salty soup and it tasted terrible, but that's okay. It's, Mistakes yeah. are, are a part of it too. And making mistakes is um, something that happens to me every day. And you know, maybe maybe some of you make mistakes every once in a while as well. Uh, and, and that's okay. It's, it's just about working through them and not letting yourself get too down about it. So some of the other things that I like to do are, are chatting with these two. Mm -hmm. um, watching some Netflix. There's some various shows on right now, whether it's uh, Netflix or a different kind of streaming service or whether it's just on on uh, a channel on TV. Sometimes laying around and, and not having too much to do can be nice. Reading a good book um, or even reading a bad book. Um, you know, just something to pass the time. Uh, playing some games on on your cell phone, or some people have some game systems uh, at their house or at a friend's house that they like to go to. And these are some other things. Um, I'd, I'd be curious what kinds of coping skills you all like to do. And I'd encourage you all to, to think about that and um, maybe even put them in the comments if you think of some of them. I think that it can be really helpful to hear what other people do because sometimes there are some things that work for me that might not work as well for you. Same thing uh, or similarly, things that work for you might not work as well for me. And so when you hear about what a lot of other people do, it's a bit of a, a brainstorm that we can all think together and always try some new ideas. Personally, I think that reaching out to other people can always really be helpful for me when I'm, uh, it keeps me feeling my best, whether that's calling a friend on the phone Maybe I lay on my bed and just chat for an hour or so or text them and see how it's going. Maybe even sometimes I like to get together with them if I can. It's been hard to do that lately since we've all been in our houses and not allowed to go out as much. And it's been kind of a bummer for me. You know, I always really like trying to see my friends when I can, but I've been trying to do some of these video chats to try and stay close to them as much as I can, even in times where I can't see them in person. I tried to, I tried to convince myself to um, make a video chat or a video hangout with a friend once a week, and I got really excited about it, but then, but then I forgot about it, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. You get a really good idea of something that you're gonna do, and for one reason or another, it just doesn't really happen. Um, and these are all, this is all just part of, part of life, I suppose. And it's okay. You don't need to give yourself a hard time if, if you have a really good idea and you forget to do it, or if you, if it sounds like a really good idea at the time, 
and then later it doesn't feel like so much. Because uh, sometimes you'll you'll realize those things as well. So um, I'd like to I'd like to ask these two on my my panda friends whether they have any questions. And sometimes I think hold up I think we lost our yeah we can pause for interpreter. So I will see. I'll have them start to tell me stuff while we're working on getting Kendra back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um. There she is. Oh. Sorry um. about that. <laughs> it's okay, it happens. Uh, welcome back, Kendra. Um, so I'm sorry, I, I completely forgot where we left off. Um, no worries. <laughs> so I think that uh, Pandita and Big Panda, we're going to ask a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So um, Pandita was just asking me, um, she's not very good at shaking the ice cream. And so she was wondering what she can do instead because her, her paws, it's a little hard for her to get both paws around the ice cream at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. As we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> some of these things work for some people and some of them don't work for others. Sometimes it works better if you do it with a friend. For example, if you have a friend over and your friend's really excited about shaking the ice cream, maybe you could make it together. There's probably enough in there for both once it all freezes. Yeah. Um, and then Big Pondo is asking me, um, about why we have to do it um, every day and why I call them coping skills. And I think that that's a good question. Sometimes coping skills, um, it sounds a bit confusing because it, so it sounds like that's what we only do if we're trying to cope with something. Um, but in reality, you can call them a lot of different things, even hobbies or any kind of enjoyable activity, really anything to pass the time can also be what we call a coping skill. There's no reason that we have to stick to one way of talking about it. And I think that it's a, it's a good point that Big Panda brought up because really, you know, the sky is the limit. There are so many different things we can do. And I know 100% that there's things that every one of you enjoy doing. There's things that you know that you like doing. There's things that maybe you used to like doing <clears throat> that you don't do so much anymore. And there's things that you haven't found yet that you will like to do. And we can use all of these things. Sometimes we like to go back to things that we used to do that we haven't done in a while. Okay. Yeah, and and with that, I did I did have a question. Um, you know, a lot of times when people talk about coping, um, sometimes they talk about not coping well or bad coping. So, is there such a thing as bad coping, and what would that look like, and is it really that bad? It's a really good question, Meryl. I think that ultimately there's probably different levels of things. And so realistically, anything that you need to do to help you get by, if, if it's necessary, then 
and it works for you, then then that is something that works for you. And it's something that you probably needed in the moment. Sometimes things that we need in the moment um, and that get us through these times when we need it, sometimes those actually don't work that well for us in the long term. Mm. Um, and sometimes if we keep using that one thing, it might feel like it's working, but maybe we, maybe a month, six months, a year, 10 years down the road, we look back and we say, you know, I can appreciate that for what it was and it got me to where I need to be right now, but I just don't think it's helping me move forward. Mm-hmm. And that can look a lot of different ways for different people. Um, some ones that, that people have, and it depends on here how each person uses it and how they interact with it and their own relationship to these different strategies. Mm-hmm. For some people, it's the way that they interact with other people, whether they're um, the things that they like to do with people or the activities. For some people, it's what they do when they're spending their own time. Um, mm-hmm. Things that I certainly know that some people have brought up to me that worked for them at a particular point in time that they say, looking back, it's kind of put me in a sticky situation is sometimes drug use, like alcohol or marijuana or things like that. Um, I know some people that felt like they, that it really got them through a, a particular time or they didn't really, they didn't know what else to do. And so they use these things, but maybe years later they have had some health complications for that or they've had some trouble with the law because of it. And they had to look and say, is this, a, is this a skill that's really being helpful for me in the long term at this point? Okay. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a follow-up question <laughs> um, because um, you said that, you know, there are things that people enjoy um, and that that could be your way of coping. Um, so thinking about the nature of what has been going on recently and um, the increasing um, racial tensions in society, what if there are things that you want to do but and like to do and that are helpful, but you can't do because the reality is, is that you know, your safety could be compromised for one reason or another. Yeah, it's a tough question, to be honest. (laughs) It's a good question that doesn't have a perfect answer. So I certainly know that that's been really on a lot of people's minds, as you said, with all the tensions that have been going on recently. And I know that similarly people have expressed it um, either because of their racial minority, their sexuality, their like their gender identity, that they've either worried that things aren't safe or it's they've had actual things happen to them um, where they certainly are not safe and um, really dangerous things have happened to them. You know, it's really hard to predict the future. And so in any given person's circumstance, I can't tell you whether this thing or that thing's going to be safe for you because I don't really know. You know, all I have to say is try your best and listen, like listen to yourself. Your safety is number one, absolutely. And if you think that something isn't going to make you safe, try something else. You know, see if there's something else you can do that you feel a little bit more comfortable with. And if there's, if there's nothing that feels safe for you in the world, see if there's someone that you can loop in to help you take a look at things and see if there's maybe some options that you haven't tried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In numbers. That's also true. Um, if, if you have that kind of support, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I, I thought that that was something really important to, to bring up because it is the reality for so many of us out there. And um, I know for folks 
um, me included, is um, anxiety levels are super high um, because of all of this. And so, you know, it's hard to sort of manage that um, or try and like relax when the threat is real. So, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it can feel particularly hard in boxing in because the more places that are unsafe and the more avenues that are closed off to you, it inherently limits it and especially feels limited to what options you do have. Right. It might be easy for somebody else to say, oh, well, just go on a run or just go to the gym or something like that. but realistically, those aren't options for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so for some people that it's really not safe for them to even leave their house, um, it necessitates a period of discovery of what is still available at this time. And is there a situation, is there a time frame, or is there expectation that things will change in some way in the future so that some of these things might become available again? Mm -hmm. I know somebody that I've, I've known people that have spent quite a bit of time in their house, even years in their house with rarely ever going outside that then because of safety and then begin a period of re-exploration of what things look like later. Yeah, that sort of makes me think of some, some of the folks who might be living in homes where um, they're not affirmed um, in any way. And, you know, if you can't be comfortable in your own home, like how, how can you take care of yourself? I know there's not really a good answer for that and it's very individually based, but what would you say to somebody who was experiencing that. Yeah, I think that it's really important that that your own individual circumstances are going to dictate your personalized choices. And so there's no one size fits all. There's probably not even one size fits most. Um, and so if, if you as you said, if you're in a situation where you don't feel like you're able to be your whole person, even in the place that you're living, if you don't feel affirmed, um, there's sometimes I hear people saying, well, you, you know, you have to come out, you have to be yourself and things like that. There's nothing that says that you have to do any of these things. Your circumstances and your unique circumstances will decide what feels right for you. There's nothing that says that you have to come out now or in five years or in 30 years. Whenever's right for you will be the right time. And whatever thing that you're doing are right for you at the time will be right for you. Whether that means spending time in your room. You know, sometimes people don't feel, if people spend too much time in their room, they say, well, it doesn't feel very good for me. But if your room is the one safe place that you have in this world, who's to say you can't spend a lot of time in your room? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's unfortunate that that is still a reality for a lot of folks. Um, but yeah, <sighs> safety is number one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and sometimes, sometimes if there's, um, if it's trouble, if there's trouble connecting with other people, whether that's because of distance or being, you know, physically unable to see them, or whether you've gone out of touch with some of your other friends, or if you're not even sure how to strike up a conversation with people, there's always new friends that you can make, ones that might be a, a little bit easier at times. <laughs> I have my my little friends that I like. I talk to them, text them pretty much every day have a little conversation with them. They've got their own personalities and it always cheers me up to do so. 
it may not look the same for you, but there's just so there's some other options to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really important, especially right now, to try and find your own community, your own support system, even if it's not within your own like home. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um I have one more question. Um so, um, and well, you might have already kind of answered it, but um, in utilizing these coping tools, um, how do you choose what one to do, right? Because I'm sure with a variety of things that one enjoys, they do different things for people, right? Yeah, sometimes people like to get into a bit of a rhythm or a bit of a routine. Have some people that say, okay, every morning, 6 a.m., this is what I do. 8 a.m., you know, I go to the gym. Uh, 9 a.m., I'm doing my 10 minute meditation for the day. Um, and they like to have things very structured. Other people say, I have 100 different things and I try one of them a day and I probably won't use it for another six months. Um, and so there's there's a wide variety. And if you're not really sure, if you so, sometimes people have a bit of an inkling. I mean, I know a lot of you watching or think, you just heard one of those and you say, oh, I'm definitely that one. I'm the first that would get up and I would say this, that, this minute, I'm gonna do that. And other people are saying 100%, I'm gonna do 10 million different things every day and I'll never come back to the same one twice. Uh, and you can do a bit of a mix and match. So um, I like to I like to set aside an hour every night uh, before I go to bed to read. And for me, uh, it's because I have a lot of trouble sleeping. I find that I get myself too keyed up during the day. And so reading is a way to just relax and calm down um, and help myself get some rest. Because if you're not getting sleep, then at least in my experience, nothing else feels very good. You know, it doesn't matter what other coping skills I'm using. If I'm not getting very good sleep, I'm gonna feel terrible the next day. Mm -hmm. So I try and make that try and make that one of my number one priorities. Um, but other than that, you know, it depends a bit on what I'm doing. There are certainly times of my life where I've been really good about um, sticking to. Uh, particular kinds of exercise just to make sure that I'm keeping my body moving. It feels really good. Um, but at times when we're forced to stick inside for a lot, it's it's a little bit harder for me. It shakes it up in ways that I haven't quite expected. And so I've used a bit more um, watching some different TV or shows and uh, trying to get some input on, okay, what are some fun things I can do with that? And kind of exploring uh, using some coping skills or using some hobbies, um, some strategies that I haven't really done so much in the recent past. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's amount of time they have for it is different too. Because some people might say, okay, well, I have about three hours of my day, four hours of my day that are really structured, and the rest of my day is pretty free. You know, that's going to be quite different from somebody who says, I'm working two, three jobs, or I'm working a couple of jobs, I'm trying to take some classes and learn some things. The amount of free time I have is somewhere in the negatives. Mm -hmm. um, and so for them, being very particular about setting aside 10 minutes a day for some quiet time for themselves, that might make all the world of difference for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, because there are a lot of people out there that are working multiple jobs and time is a luxury that they don't have. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you bringing that into the conversation because it's, it's very relevant. Um, and it's, it's 
it is those folks who really need that time the most mm -hmm. because they are so, everything is so compact into, you know, 24 hour day or, you know, a uh, seven day work week for mm -hmm. some folks. Yep, yep. Um, as an example, I knew somebody who um, had a schedule like that and she said that the way that she would really hold herself together. She said it was it was really overwhelming at times for her just how much she had to work and take care of um, um, some other people that she had to. But she would always make time to get a little, spend a little bit of more, a little bit of extra time in the shower every morning. And that was her time for herself that, that she didn't have to think about anything else in the world. There was nobody else that she had to interact with or help or or deal with there was no job or responsibilities she could just sit there and and enjoy the shower for an extra 10 15 minutes every day mm -hmm. um, and that was that was her favorite part of the day yeah what what about the opposite of of that so you know because of this pandemic a lot of people have lost jobs and lost their income and you know they may have all this free time but they also are constantly concerned about how they're going to pay the bills which yeah. is real mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and there's just there's um, almost too much free time in the sense that it all you you know if if you allow yourself you can fill up every hour of the day with worrying about it you know Sometimes it actually can be helpful to strategize planned. You can try this one of two ways. Sometimes people can plan when they're going to worry about things. And so you say, okay, well, I have the whole day. And so I'm going to give myself this one hour block or this two hour block every day. I'm going to bring all my worries into it. Whatever I have to think about, whether it's you know, whether it's the finances, whether it's making sure I have a place to stay, looking for a new job, things like that. I can worry about these things at that time. And in return, what I'm allowing myself to do is not worry about it the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. And that can help people feel like they're allowed to worry about these things that are legitimate concerns and they're allowed to spend time on it without having to feel like it takes over their life. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if you're having trouble doing that, try things in the reverse first, perhaps. If you're just having feeling, if you're feeling like it's just too hard to only allow yourself to worry at that time, then say, let's reverse it a bit. I'm giving myself this one or two hours per day where I'm not allowed to worry about it. If a worry comes up, can't stop things from coming in your head, but just put it away. Just say, you know what? I've got the rest of the day to think about it. This hour or two, this is my time. Mm. So you do whatever you want to do. You just do something else. You know, whether it's writing something down, drawing or coloring, whatever, whatever makes you happy, whatever's going to de-stress you a bit, just allow yourself to do that. And if those worries come into your head, just say, I'll take care of that in a I'm just not going to think about that for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I thought I had another question, but I do not. <laughs> not right now. Um, but yeah. Um, so the things that you mentioned, um, um, are they things that you have personally tried yourself or if you've been in such scenarios? Um, um, and how, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this. Because when, when you start doing, a, a utilizing a coping skill, it doesn't always work right away and it takes time sometimes. And like how, how much, time should you give yourself in order to um, 
practice something regularly before you should be like, oh, it's consistently not working. So I'm just going to try something else. Yeah, I would say that there is, uh, to answer your first question, yeah, all the suggestions that I'm giving are things that I've that I've used myself. They are things that I've done myself. So um, in terms of how long you should try something, if you're interested in try something and say, go for it. It's okay if it keeps failing. Um, part of it is allowing yourself to fail in it because um, the practice of it is just as important as as anything else, there's there's no way to like succeed or win at it. And it's just about it's about doing something. And so, um, try them. Try some of these things regularly, and, and put aside some time. If if you're having if your day's a bit jumbled, put aside some time to do it. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you try. You can try the same one every day. If you're not really sure if it works, at some point you say, I'm still not sure if it works, but I just feel like doing something else today. That's mm -hmm. great. There's really no right or wrong answer. One thing that can be helpful is to make a bit of a list. So if you have trouble coming up with things in the moment and you say, I just don't know what I, I just don't know what to do, you know, I'm I'm feeling kind of down today. And I don't know if I have any, I don't know if I have any coping skills. I don't know if I have any hobbies. I don't know if I have anything I like to do. Sometimes it can be helpful to write things down in anticipation because you might think, you know what? I think that I'm going to feel like this at some point. And I know at that point I'm going to have trouble thinking of things. So I'm going to write down five or 10 things that I like to do, whether it's running outside or whether it's drawing or whether it's reading or, you know, making sock puppets, whatever, whatever it is that you like to do. Um, write some of them down and that way you can keep that in your pocket or put it on your fridge or up on your mirror in your bedroom or whatever you like to do and say, when I'm having trouble thinking of something I want to do, I can go to that. Maybe you have a list of things that you like to do Maybe you even like to keep a separate list of things you would like to try. You just haven't got around. There's nothing that says you can't have two or three lists or however many works for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think you touched on a very good point in terms of like not, not, knowing what to do or not being able to think of anything when you are in some sort of crisis. Um, I know that happens to me sometimes. And yeah, having a list can be really helpful. Um, so you don't have to think about it. It's right there. You know, you, um, you put it in a place where you can see it easily um, and, and things like that. Um, because yeah, when your brain is not <laughs> fully working the way it usually is, it you're like thinking about things and planning things becomes much more difficult, right? So exactly, yeah. So yeah. you're doing your future self a favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, I just want to remind folks who are watching that if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the comments and we'll see them and um, address them as they as they come up. Um, Absolutely. And also if people have the ideas, the coping skills, please put those in the comments as well. Yes. Well, hobbies, you call one every month. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know about you, but I'm one that like has a collection of hobbies. <laughs> so <Definitely. laughs> um, I always have like. Yeah, and the more you can practice them, if there's some that yeah. you really like or that you find really helpful, if you can just work them in whenever you can. You can really make it a habit and you will find yourself using these without even having to think hmm, what are my hobbies? Or hmm, 
what are things that I like to do or that make me feel better? You'll just, when you're feeling down, you can ingrain it in. And so you just say, you, when you just start to feel it, you just go and start to do these things and you say, oh, oh yeah, okay, that makes you feel a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like an example for me is that when um, I feel like I need to do something, like I, I like I physically agitated and I need to do something with my hands, um, but it's not necessarily something I need to think about. Um, I knit, um, and so like that's, I mean, depending on what you're making, it could be a very repetitive um, task. And um, for me, since I I have been knitting for so long, I don't have to think about it. What I'm doing, I don't, sometimes I don't even have to look at what I'm doing. I just do it. Um, so I guess that's also when like practicing it comes uh, <laughs> into play, right? Exactly. Yeah. And and the reverse of it is that there's a there's ways to check in with yourself if you notice that you're not doing things very often that you usually really like to do, or there are ways that you've been that people have their tells. Um, and so for me, I know that when I get really stressed out, I like to take a really long shower. And so if if I notice that my shower today took an extra 20 minutes or something, then I say, oh, you know what? I think that I've been more stressed than you. I think I've been more stressed than usual. I didn't even really realize it. You know, I need to check in with myself and see what kinds of things I can do. Yeah, like, um like a, a little body scan, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that would work for, for most folks, but I know that for some folks, a body scan could actually be really triggering. Mm -hmm. um, would, is, is there any like alternative to that if like being that much in your body is too much? Yeah, I mean, some people like the physicality of the body scan. Some people like particular things or like even just a particular part, like they just check in with their like head or their shoulders or something where they know, like they tend to keep a lot of their stress mm -hmm. um, or their, you know, their heart rate or something, or something. like that. Other people just say, you know what, I just don't really like checking the whole physical thing in general. And so they just, they're more about just checking whether they feel like they've been a little bit more snappy than usual or or whether they've had a little bit more difficulty concentrating or they haven't been sleeping as well. They just look at some of the other, other ways that they can realize that they haven't been feeling as good as usual. Yeah. Um, sorry, I completely spaced out. Um, no, just <laughs> my brain went completely blank. It happens. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't see anybody. And it looks like we have about five minutes left. Is that right? Um, ish, uh, depending on if people have questions and things like that. Because okay. so, I did want to make sure that we check the freezer before we finish. Oh, I was not going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we can check the freezer now. That's okay. Fine. That's yeah. that. There's no questions. Let's go see how it's doing. Yeah. Oh, we'll say hi to the cat on the way there. <laughs> hi, cat. Oh, <laughs> here's a little meow. I chi chi out the phone. All right. So let's let me get my camera back in position here. Mm -hmm. It feels nice and frosty, but let's see if it froze at all. Okay. So 
So we've got a spoon here. And it looks like you can tell it's still kind of like pudding-y. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty soft, but the very edge of it has started to freeze. There's a little oh. part there on the spoon there. Hmm. Is it good? <laughs> it's not bad. Hmm. It tastes like um it tastes pretty creamy. It's almost like a frozen whipped cream. Mm. Um, so I think in if I gave it like a couple more hours, you want some too? Okay. <laughs> I think if I gave it a couple more hours, it might taste even better. Mm. Almost like kind of like a sweet cream ice cream. Um, it would probably come out something like soft serve. So mm. I'm gonna give it a try. Throw this back in the freezer. Yeah. And maybe I'll have myself a little treat later. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been that long. It's yeah. it's probably gonna need a little bit more. Um, Awesome. Well, um, since I am not seeing any questions, um, is there anything that any like last words you would like to say to those who are watching? Well, I think it's been such a pleasure hanging out with all of you. Um, thank you for allowing me to spend this time with you in all of your homes or wherever else you're watching this. Um, and I hope that this time has been meaningful to you and uh, uh, stay safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alexis. Um, and thank you again, Kendra from Rainfrog Interpreters, um, who has been doing a great job with us for this entire summer. <laughs> um, I do want to emphasize uh, safety. I know that this is a really, really, really rough time. And, um, you know, folks may be suffering in many different ways. Um, I just, you know, I want to emphasize that um, doing the things that you need to do, but as safe as possible, um is highly important um we want you all to be safe um but at the same time um i understand that there are things that we may have to do that may involve risks i'm being very non-specific but um, because there is a wide range of things um and i don't know everybody's scenarios but i i just want y'all to understand that um, you are important um, and that you are cared for. Um, and if you do need um, help identifying resources or what have you, I know we've talked about a lot of different scenarios today, but um, you can feel free to reach out um, to us at the center on Colfax, um, and we will do the best we can to support you. So I just wanted to at least leave it on that note. Um, and with that, I also wanted to put up um, Alexis's contact information if you have any more questions um, for her and yeah i think i think we're good <laughs> so thank y'all again um and we will close with keeping it clean queer and under control love it